Okay, so let's uh, take a range of subjects that have all got one thing in common, and that is movement of water. They're, they're going to be ocean currents, tides, waves, longshore drifts, and rip currents. Now, um, I find that people sort of get confused with these ones. They start answering questions of one with answers from another one. And Paddy are very specific about, you know, the words that they use in the questions. And of course, they're very specific about what the words are that they want in the answers as well. So let's just take a look at these one at a time and just see if we can work out, um, you know, a way of thinking that we can answer the questions correctly when we see them. Now, the first one, which is about the major ocean currents, you know, this is about, you know, where the uh, the currents move clockwise in the northern hemisphere, uh, counterclockwise or anticlockwise in the southern hemisphere, and it's called the Coriolis effect. Now, this is caused by the rotation of the Earth. OK, so this is caused by the Earth's rotation. I've got a complete video about this very subject, so I'll leave that one for now and then move on. OK, now the next subject is tides. OK, now we're, we're fairly aware that when we go diving, sometimes we've got high tide, sometimes we've got low tide. Um, and Paddy wants to know the answer to the question, what causes tides? So let's have a look and see what causes tides. First of all, I'm going to draw on the board. On the board, I've drawn the Earth, this is the Moon, and this is the Sun, clearly not to scale. Now, what happens uh, with gravity, as we all know, if we drop something on the Earth, it goes to the centre of the Earth. All these planetary bodies have got their own, uh, their own gravity, and the Moon and the Sun are no different. So what happens is that over 70% of the Earth's surface is, is covered by water, so what happens is that the water is drawn towards the gravity of the moon. The, why the moon? Because it's closer to us than the sun. So, so not particularly well drawn, I would think, but you can see here that the moon is pulling the sea towards it and the, the, the sun also is pulling the water towards the sun as well. So here, in parts of the world, we're gonna have very high, high tides and very low, low tides. Some people call these spring tides, don't they? Now, let's see what happens when the moon changes to a different position. OK, so you can see what's happened now. The sun is still here and the moon has now changed direction. Now, the moon has got the, the biggest part of the gravitational pull of the water. And so what's happening now is but they're both fighting each other. Can you see this? So the moon's going to win. OK, not particularly well drawn, but you can see that the water layer around the Earth is sort of much more natural. It's uh, much more even because the moon is pulling and the sun is pulling from different directions. And so therefore the water is being sort of uh, we've got not quite so high high tides and not quite so low low tides. And these we, we know as neap tides. So the answer to the question, what causes tides? It's primarily the moon, but also the gravitational um, effect of the moon and the sun. OK, so that's the main part of the answer. Sometimes things like um, they also ask about the topographical features as well. I'll come to that just in a second. I'll put the answer we want up here first and then just move on a bit in a minute. So now I've put the answer to the question, what causes tides is the gravitation of the moon and the sun. But sometimes, for example, on the south coast of England, this is the south coast of England. This is the Isle of Wight. Here we've got something called Portland Bill. Here is the River Solent. We've got these topographical features which sort of disturb the tides a little bit. Not really disturbed, but elsewhere in Britain, um, mostly everywhere, we have two tides a day, one, one every 13 hours roughly. But here in this area here, because we've got a whole load of land bits in the way, topographical features, Paddy would say, they would cause um, disruption here. And actually in this area, we have four tides a day, just in this localised area. So it's not only the gravitation of the moon and the sun, but also some topographical features. OK, so they're, they're there. Now let's move on to the next subject, which is waves. 
Now waves, it's really easy if we stand back and think about this. If you think of just an ordinary puddle on a nice calm day and it'd be flat. But as soon as there's a breeze or wind that goes across it, then it gets ripples on it. If you, when you go down to the coast, on a still day, there's no waves. Maybe just a few rollers coming in. But on a different day, when you see high winds, wow, then there's massive waves. So it's very clear, it's very easy answer to this one. Begins with a W. What causes waves? Wind. It's very, very straightforward. So now we've got waves that push water maybe. And here we're gonna come up to the next one, which is called longshore drift. And it's a very dis good description about what happens really, because I've just drawn a coastline and perhaps we've got water, either waves or water coming in at an angle here, coming in at an angle, it hits the shore and pushes forward. And actually what happens is that although that the current main currents are coming into this area in this angle, it hits the shore and causes a longshore drift. So that's very, very simple. What causes a longshore drift? The answer is uh, water coming in at an angle. Very simple. Then we come to the last one on this list, rip currents. Okay, this is another one that uh, people understand, but sometimes they get their answers wrong. I'm not really too sure why, but let's have a look at this. This is where alongside the shore, we might have some obstacles, maybe reefs or sandbars or something like that. So they may be sort of here and here and here. And what happens is either the current's coming in from an angle or, it, or the waves are pushing over here, but there's a buildup of water in this area between the obstruction and the shore. But the buildup of water can't get out apart from where it funnels through these gaps. And here, we get escaping water coming out very fast. So a rip current is a very fast current going away from the shore. Okay, here, there's a bit of a myth about rip currents. Um, the myth is that a rip current would pull you underneath the water. That's, that's not true. A, a rip current is a horizontal current, but it's very strong sometimes and it goes away from the shore here. And you can identify it because on these ones here, you'll see the ripples, you'll see the movement of the water going out. And quite often it's a bit foamy uh, on the top or there's bubbles or foam on the top on, and going out as well. So that's what a rip current is. Let's just recap. We've got ocean currents uh, and they're caused by the Earth's rotation. We've got tides uh, and they're caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun and topographical features as well. Uh, waves, very simple, they're caused by wind, that's all. Uh, longshore drift, that's caused by um, waves or currents coming into the shore at an angle here, pushing water along. And rip currents are caused by obstructions in the water, causing a buildup of water um, and that can't get out. And so it funnels out very fast and very strong in between the, um, the obstacles. So that's it. I hope that's cleared it up. I hope it's helped a bit. Um, you can see on my webpage, there'll be some uh, questions as usual for you to have a little practice with. And uh, I'll speak to you again soon.